Welcome to The Zone. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Dobbins. We've got some great guests in the studio for you tonight and some great music videos. What's coming up tonight, Rosie? Well, we have one of my favorites, PAX 217, Newsboys, Ashley Cleveland, and more, like Stephen Curtis Chapman. It's going to be awesome. But we also have some special guests, and Michael is going to tell us who they are. That's right, Rosie. Hey, we've got some special guests in the house with us tonight. we got NFL players, Billy Granville, Tom Carter, and front office man himself, Eric Ball. Give it up for him. Hey, we want to thank these guys for taking the opportunity to join us tonight. We've got some special information that these guys want to pass along to you just to kind of share where they are right now. So keep it locked and tune into what we've got going on. Right now, I want to kick it to my, my boy, my homie. L dog, what you got going on over there, baby? <laughs> What's up, Mikey Mike? Hey, we got an awesome show like they were saying. We got this next video coming up. You ready for it? The name of this group is News Boys. And this video is called Entertaining Angels. Stay locked into the zone. <laughs> Welcome back to The Zone. Hey, that was another smash hit from Newsboys with Entertaining Angels. Hey, before we kick it to the next artist and show you the next video that we've got, I've got sitting next to me this evening, Tom Carter of the Cincinnati Bengals. Hey, for those of you who don't know, Tom was a first-round draft pick back in the NFL draft way back in the day, but uh, we won't get into that. <laughs> but, Tom, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Hey, listen, uh, being in the NFL, I know you encounter a lot of things. And I'm going to ask you the question that I'm pretty sure a bunch of people always ask you. What's it like being in the NFL? Uh, it's great. Uh, it's a great job. Uh, like I said, uh, 
I tell everyone it's a tough job to have. Uh, you go out there, you see all the uh, the fame and the glory and, and the, uh, all the finances going on. But uh, every day, you know, you see guys coming in with torn knees, uh, beat up bodies, and the whole nine. So uh, it's, it's a rough job, but it's also a great blessing. You know, that's great because I, I think a lot of people look at you guys and see the glamour and glitz of your own TV and, and all the fun that you quote unquote are having. But I don't think they realize the the physical torment that you put your body through just to be prepared to play for Sunday. It's tough. It's really tough. And uh, some guys just barely make it to Sunday to play. Uh, you have some guys that sit out of practice all week long. Um, and uh, a lot of guys' careers end in one day. You know, one day of practice, uh, one game, a uh, whole career is over. So uh, I think that's why it's uh, so important that, uh, you know, we just – you know, concentrate on education to make sure you got a degree. That's great. Hey, listen, you know, I know that being a Christian, it can sometimes be tough, particularly in the NFL. Hey, share a little bit about when you decided to become a Christian and, and how has that helped you in being in the NFL? Uh, just to give a little testimony, uh, I grew up in the church. Uh, whole family's in the church from uncles, uh, pastors, grandmas, grandma to church, and uh, the whole thing with that. But uh, uh, like most teenagers uh, at that age, I was uh, not really trying to be obedient to what God's word called me to do. Um, me and my wife went to high school together and uh, shortly after being drafted in the NFL, uh, our first year in the league, we uh, both decided to uh, you know, commit our lives to Christ. Uh, actually be sold out for Christ, be soldiers for Christ. And uh, I think that was the, you know, the biggest life change we ever had. And uh, from that point on, like seven, eight years ago, we just uh, constantly every day into the word. Hey, one last question for you. Hey, listen, I'm up. You know, senior in high school or, or senior in college right now. You know, I'm, I'm gearing up, ready to step to that next level. Hey, give me some advice about what I can do to kind of step it up to that next level and be a first round draft pick like yourself. Uh, most of the time, when I speak to uh, teenagers at this age, I think discipline is the biggest thing you have to have. Uh, I tell everyone the ages from uh, 17 to 22 are going to be the most important years of your life. Uh, you have to make so many major decisions. What school are you going to go to? Are you going to complete college? Uh, if, if those years in your life don't turn out, um, the way you want them to, uh, you can have a long road uphill. So I'd say everybody to stay focused, uh, not be subject to peer pressure, and uh, definitely uh, you know keep the eyes on the Lord, and uh, definitely uh, stay away from the opposite sex and just uh, stay focused. Keeping the eyes on the Lord is the important piece, man, in all that we do. Tom, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. Hey, listen, I know uh, there's much, much more to come, so keep it locked, keep it talked right here. And stay tuned for what we've got for you. Hey, but right now, what I want to do is kick it to my girl, Rosie. What you got going on over there, girl? Coming up, we have Ashley Cleveland and the power clip of the week. PAX 217, stay in the zone. <laughs> Welcome back. We're in the zone, and thanks for staying with us. If you would like to be a part of our studio audience and have as much fun as everybody else here has, all you have to do is just contact us on the website right here at www.surfthezone.com. Right now, we're going to check in with Larry and meet a real special guest. Larry, what's up? What's up, Mr. Dave? Hey, I'm sitting here with Mr. Eric Ball, a former player of the Cincinnati Bengals. How you doing, my man? Give me some love. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to ask you just a quick question. What is it like being a um, what was it like being a Christian in the NFL? Well, when I first came into the league, I wasn't always uh, I had accepted Christ when I was about 15, but I was still yet in the world and it wasn't until 1994 that I finally dedicated my life to Christ. You know, my wife came to me and she was in search of the true God. You know, she um, she had gotten to the point where she had started reading different things. She was wanting to search out who God was. Well, she came to me and at that point, you know, I was a good guy. You know, I was claiming to be a Christian, and, you know, I wasn't saying all the right things, but not doing all the right things. Good you know? morals? Good morals. I, I, I didn't hurt nobody. You know, I was, I was out uh, giving the charity. You know, uh, I, I felt that I was a good person. So 
she came to me and started asking questions. Well, I wasn't able to ask answer those questions, and so she went elsewhere to seeking them. And lo and behold, guess who came knocking at the door? First person who came, Jehovah Witnesses, and she sat down and started, you know, uh, studying with them. Well, like I said, I wasn't uh, uh, strong in my faith at that time, and she continued to, you know, sit down with them. And all I knew was, hey, they didn't believe the same things that I was taught, and that's all I could tell her. So. At that point in time, I had to become the man of the house, and through uh, through the church that we joined, uh, Christ Emmanuel, you know, I got uh, went through catechism classes, and you know, that's a question and answer, and then basically I turned my life around. You know, I quit doing the things that uh, I used to do. You know, the hanging out, the drinking, the you know, not uh, uh, the cursing and everything else, and just started living a uh, life as an example of Christ. Hmm. Man, I appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. All right. Well, now you heard it from Mr. Ball. I'm about to toss it like swoop to Rosie. Rosie, what's going on over there? All right. Well, coming up is a video from a woman who is known as the Janis Joplin of Christian music, and she's covering a Rolling Stones tune. So here's Ashley Cleveland with Gimme Shelter right here on The Zone. <laughs> Yeah, this 
Thanks for watching The Zone. What you just saw was Ashley Cleveland with her video, Gimme Shelter, doing a cover of the Stones and doing it live. That was awesome. Now we're going to take some questions from the audience, and Larry is going to get the first question for us. All right, just real quick, uh, what's your name and what's your question? My name is Greg, and my question is, is when you're on the field and things go wrong, is it hard for you to keep your face, uh, your faith? Is it hard for you to not curse and not go after other players and get upset? <laughs> I think it is tough. You know, it's definitely challenging. You got to pray a lot, and I like to pray, you know, before the game, and I pray throughout the game because I mean, it's violent. It's a violent game. It's nasty. A lot of blood and spitting and kicking people and you know it's easy to get in the flesh so you just got to pray throughout the game and like lord help me before i kill this guy <laughs> <laughs> okay uh what's your name and what's your question my name is megan and my question is what is one time that your faith has been challenged the most probably the biggest time is when you have an injury uh you don't know why you have the injury you, you're saying god i'm doing everything that you called me to do uh and you start you know, thoughts go through your mind, is this the end of my career? What am I do with my family? Uh, so your faith is constantly being challenged when you're not able to perform on the field. Okay, what's your name and what's your question? My name's Brandon, and I wanted to know, does your faith ever change if you're hanging around with a different group of people, like if you're hanging with the football players or if you go to church? I think a lot of that has to do with your foundation. Uh, for the three of us, we're probably the strongest ones. Where as far as players, these two here are the the leaders on the team. And then what you have is some of the new guys who may come in and have just come into faith. That you sometimes have to be an example for them. Thanks, guys. Awesome, awesome comments. Coming up, we've got our power clip of the week tonight on the zone. And if you want to find out how you can be a part of our studio audience, we just want you to check out our website right there on the bottom of your screen, and you can be right here in the zone. <laughs>
Alrighty, that was the power clip of the week. That was PAX 217. As you can see, them boys was just bouncing. They just a little buck wild, ain't they? Oh, by the way, here's your remote, and I'm just playing with you. I ain't want you to change the channel. Hey, we great toss over to Mike. Mike, whoop, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Hey, we've got one last guest that's with us tonight, and I want to introduce to some and present to others Billy Granville. Billy, if you don't know, he's probably got the best job in the NFL right now. He gets paid to hit people. And I mean, he bring the wood. So be sure to act on your, be on your best behavior. But listen, Billy, I thank you for joining us tonight. Hey, listen, being in the NFL, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you this, and I know I asked Tom this, but, you know, being in the NFL, what are some of the, the, the uh, pitfalls that you guys typically try to avoid in, in terms of being able to perform your best on the field on Sunday? I mean, I think there's a lot of pitfalls in the NFL. I think, um, you know, everyone wants your time. You know, I think you have family and friends that come out of the woodwork that want your time. I think that, um, you know, rest comes into play. I think that people want your money. I think that, you know, fans are always, you know, wanting you to do things for them, you know, come and do certain things. And I think those things can really consume you, and you have to be disciplined to be able to manage your time well. That's great. Hey, one other question for you. Being a Christian and being aggressive on the field, you know, I know those are two things that seem like an oxymoron, you know, but you're paid to get out there and just bring the wood and just take it to people. So explain to me a little bit and explain to our viewers a little bit how you can still be aggressive yet still be a Christian. I mean, to me, uh, I don't think it's very confusing. I think that, you know, as a Christian, I believe I should be the most intense athlete out there. And I know people that have different personalities. I tend to be more emotional. But, you know, um, David was a man after God's own heart, and he was a worshiper. And I, I believe I'm a worshiper. I, I love to um, lay before the Lord and pray to him. I, I enjoy praise and worship during church. But um, David was also a warrior. And when it was time to go to battle, you know, he would slay your head off. You know, he slew the great giant Goliath. You know, he won many battles for the Lord, and, um, and God helped him. And that's my attitude. You know, when I get out in the field, I'm all about business, and um, I want to be nasty. Because that's, that's when it's time to get nasty when we're on the battlefield. And then, you know, after the game, we can, we can go to church and sing and go out to eat and all those nice things. Listen, you know, we're glad that you guys joined us tonight. But before we go, we got something special for you. But I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to kick it to my girl, Rosie, who's going to drop it for you. Keep you locked into the zone. <laughs> Thanks, Wayne. I wanted to thank the Bengals right now, right now, right now. This is number 52. I want to thank you, man. Great, great show tonight. It was wonderful. Enjoyed it very much. Well, praise God. And Mr. E.B., Eric Ball, I tell you, thank you for coming, sir. Thank you for having me. Amen, amen. <laughs> hey, we want to thank everybody. I, I don't know about you, man, but I had a lot of fun sitting here kicking it with my man, Tom Carter. Tom, I thank you for coming out tonight, man. And, and from the rest of us, man, we thank you for taking the time to, to share your testimony with us. Well, thanks, everybody, for being here. And I hope uh, all this uh, wisdom and God is uh, laid in our hearts, uh, not falling on deaf ears.